G'day mate, 40 here. So if you're English and you have a strong sense of English identity, like how do you celebrate that? Right? It's not easy. So since Labour came in under Tony Blair in the 1990s, Wales and Scotland got considerable autonomy. So if you want to celebrate your English identity, how do you do that? How do you celebrate English nationalism? Right? Basically comes down to two major choices for the regular bloke. Right? One choice is the Church of England, and the other choice is the English soccer club, soccer team, the national English soccer team. So England, you know, grinds to a halt when there's a, a match like today's against France in the, in the quarterfinals. So the United States States has a, you know, a pretty decent national soccer team, but uh, America certainly doesn't grind to a halt when the American team goes through to the knockout round. Like even against, whoa, whoa, that's pretty good, mate. You almost got it. Try again, mate. Try again. Oh, good on you. So, yeah, America can play some arch enemy in the knockout round and uh, still, you know, like Iran, and uh, it still is not going to capture the national consciousness because there's just a sense that, uh, that you know, that the game is not very American. The, the notion of American exceptionalism, it's not just in our politics and in our nationalism and in our ethos, it's also in our sport, right? Eric Hobsbawm, the, the Marxist historian, said that the 20th century was the American century in everything but sport. Because when, when they play the Super Bowl, you know, probably a maximum of maybe 5 million people outside of America are, are watching it live. Now, as opposed to the World Cup, where you'll have over 3 billion people watching it live. I mean, you have over 100 million people watching you know, English Premier League soccer live. Right? You know, 20 times as many people as who watch the, the Super Bowl live outside of America. Okay, talking outside of England. So, American exceptionalism also you know, dominates sport, right? We developed our own form of football, we developed baseball, basketball. And you know, America, you know, wants to go its own way. It sees itself as a distinct nation. You know, every nation sees itself as quite distinct, but we're separate from the world in that we don't take soccer and cricket seriously. Anyway, if you want to take English national identity seriously, like, what's the vessel for that? Like, how do you express that that sense of a community? And right, one way is you can do it through the Church of England. And the other way you can do it is through the English national soccer team, or you can do it through the like the English cricket team. And England experiences it you know, more through its national soccer team than through its cricket team, because uh, modern life is becoming increasingly lonely. Like more and more people are living alone. Uh, more and more people have no good friends, more and more people don't have family, more and more people are not married, don't, don't have children, more and more people eat alone, more and more people are bowling alone. So the easiest way to connect by going to a sports bar like I did this morning at 6 a.m. And uh, watching England versus France, right? And just immediately felt a strong sense of connection to a hundred other people cheering on England in the bar. So you see the rise of the, the St. George's flag representing England, like English national identity become increasingly important to the English rather than just British identity, which also includes Ireland, you know, Wales and Scotland. And, and the primary vessel for feeling and expressing 
and, and, and gathering with people and connecting with people over this form of identity is through supporting the national English soccer team. And one thing that people really do alone is go to a sporting event. Right? Only about 10% of people who go to an English Premier League match go alone. And it's overwhelmingly something you do with other people and you can be incredibly you know, antisocial, you can have poor social skills, you can be depressed loner, you can be socially awkward, and you'll still be able to find connection by being a supporter of your, your national soccer team or you know, your, your soccer club or just being a sports fan. And uh, it saves thousands of lives. Thousands of people don't commit suicide because that surge of connection they get uh, over sports. And so even if your team loses, like England lost a heartbreaker 2-1 to one to France today, but you still get bonded in your heartbreak. You still have a topic to discuss. You have shared intense emotions, right? You, you have something to become nostalgic about. You have like shared memories, shared emotional experiences with your with fellow members of your nation. Like you know, good solid bonds to feel connected to people around you and with the decline of organized religion the decline of public life the decline of, of men's clubs right the you know ever expansion of civil rights legislation making it more difficult to have freedom of association you know, one of the last things that you can bond over is the national soccer team.